With all the talk of a Matrix reboot, I decided to take a closer look at the best thing to ever come from the Matrix franchise, the Animatrix. 20 years ago, I recall sitting in the theater watching The Matrix for the first time, filled with a mixture of awe and dread. Sure, the action was amazing and the effects mind-blowing, but deep in my nerd heart, I couldn't believe how blatantly the filmmakers ripped off, stole, lifted, were inspired? Let's go with that. Were inspired by manga, anime, and other films. In the years leading up to the sequels, I had countless arguments with family, friends, and coworkers. It became painfully obvious that most people fell into one of two camps, lovers of all things Matrix, and a quiet minority that appreciated the film, but couldn't shake the fact that the Matrix was nothing more than a hodgepodge of greater works, like Ghost in the Shell. Any serious conversation deconstructing the Matrix requires a deep look at the seminal manga by Masamune Shiro and the 1995 anime by Mamoru Oshii. Both the anime and manga are the blueprint in which the Wachowskis built the Matrix, from the opening credits, art direction, shot selection, and philosophical ideology, these two carry a lot of the same sensibility. And can you offer me proof of your existence? How can you, when neither modern science nor philosophy can explain what life is? Still not convinced? That's cool, you're a Star Wars fan. I get it. But you can't ignore the countless interviews in which the Wachowskis themselves list Ghost in the Shell as an influence. We like Japanimation. We like Japanimation. The Wachowski brothers showed me Ghost in the Shell, and they showed me what they wanted to do with that type of action and photography and try to make it with real people. Boom. Dark City. Alex Poyas's second film, released one year earlier, is a neo-noir film that features a man who wakes up one day only to discover that his whole world is an illusion created and controlled by a sinister cabal. He quickly learns that he's the chosen one, gifted with mysterious powers to free the world. This is the machine the strangers use to amplify their thoughts, the machine that changes their world. You must take control of it. Wait a minute. Whoa, that sounds so freaking familiar. Not convinced? Play both of these films side by side and the similarities become painfully obvious. And to be honest, I did it as a drinking game. It's great, I was passed out on the floor after like 10 minutes. Of course, I could go on listing all the other places The Matrix pulled inspiration from, but this video isn't about The Matrix, Matrix Reloaded, or Matrix Revolution, which were both dumpster fires. This is about the Animatrix and the incredible universe the Wachowskis created, a universe where greater storytellers would go on to create original work that pushed the envelope and made us see the true potential of The Matrix. The Animatrix is an anthology comprised of nine animated short films based on The Matrix trilogy, directed by seven visionary anime directors, including three of my faves. Koji Morimoto, animator on films like Akira and Fist of the North Star. Yoshiaki Kawajiri, creator of Ninja Scrolls. Answer this. And Shinichiro Watanabe, director of many critically acclaimed anime series like Samurai Champloo, Kids on the Slope, and of course, Cowboy Bebop, the best anime series ever made. That's not even up for discussion. It's just fact. Now, if you're a fan of this channel, you know I have a tendency to not spoil a film. So in keeping with tradition, I'll focus my attention on the five best shorts, in my humble opinion. The Second Renaissance, part one and two. Animated by Mahiro Maeda and written by the Wachowskis, these two shorts are arguably the Wachowskis' best work ever. They do an incredible job of fleshing out how the Matrix came to be and set the stage for everything to come. But the real genius is how the story highlights society's tendency toward prejudice, exploitation, cruelty, and a history of committing atrocities. And if robots are truly built in our image, why should we expect anything different in return? written and directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri. Program delivers a visual feast that showcases the craftsmanship of Japanese anime by dialing back the use of 3D animation in favor of a limited color palette and a flatter style that at times 
looks like a traditional Japanese ink painting. And as far as action is concerned, you would be hard pressed to find a more kinetic and fluid anime. World Record. Featuring yet another incredible story by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, World Record is a hyper-stylized tale of a runner who dares to overcome the limits of the Matrix through sheer strength and willpower. Littered with symbolism, this is by far one of the standouts in the anthology, showcasing the true potential for storytelling in a simulated universe with defined boundaries begging to be challenged and redefined. Beyond. Written and directed by Koji Morimoto, Beyond follows a teenage girl looking for her lost cat that's wandered into a haunted house, which we later learn is a zone filled with glitches in the matrix that cause strange things to happen. On face value, this may seem like a simple tweak on the infamous deja vu scene from the original film, but it quickly becomes something deeper and more meaningful, calling into question our own reality and the possibility that we too live in a simulation. I mean, we do. I mean, it's like Rick and Morty. We basically live in a battery. Inside that container is an infinite universe with a planet capable of generating massive amounts of power. And for those fans wondering why I didn't include the final flight of the Osiris, kid story, matriculated, or a detective story, well, I found those shorts to be entertaining, but weak by comparison to those mentioned earlier. And if I'm really, really being honest, the animation techniques employed in those shorts have not aged well. If you want serious eye candy, then check out my video on love, death, and robots right here. Don't agree with my opinion? I'd love to hear all about it in the comment section below. Think I nailed it? I love accolades. Let me hear about it in the comment section below. Regardless, smash that like and subscribe button. That way you get notified the minute I drop a new episode. And as always, if you're a super fan, tell your family, your friends, and help your coworkers too. See you guys next week.